In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Good evening and welcome to Mass on this Holy Monday, and also welcome to those who are joining us online. Yesterday we experienced Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem with shouts of Hosanna. Now we are looking firmly towards the cross where Jesus will be lifted up and gather all people to himself. In the gospel this evening, we hear how Mary anoints the feet of Jesus and wipes them with her hair, a lavish and intimate act, pointing us towards the suffering to come. We gather this evening with the church throughout the world. And as we offer this mass to the praise and glory of God, let us pray for the renewal of God's church. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. And I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sin, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love toward the human race, sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom my soul delights. I have endowed him with my spirit, that he may bring true justice to the nations. He does not cry out or shout aloud, or make his voice heard in the streets. He does not break the crushed reed, nor quench the wavering flame. Faithfully, he brings true justice. He will neither waver nor be crushed, until true justice is established on earth for the islands are awaiting his law. Thus says God the law, he who created the heavens and spread them out, who gave, who gave shape to the earth and what comes from it, who gave breath to its people and life to the creatures that move in it. The Lord have called you to serve the cause of right. I have taken you by the hand and formed you I have appointed you as covenant of the people and light of the nations, the open eyes of the blind, to free captives from prison, 
and those who live in darkness from the dungeon. This is the word of the Lord. The response to the psalm, the Lord is my light and my help. The Lord is my light and my help. The Lord is my light and my help. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Before whom shall I shrink? The Lord is my light and my help. When evildoers draw near to devour my flesh, it is they, my enemies and foes, who stumble and fall. The Lord is my light and my help. Though an army encamp against me, my heart would not fear. Though war break out against me, even then would I trust. The Lord is my light and my help. I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Hope in him, hold firm and take heart. Hope in the Lord. The Lord is my light and my help. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hail our King, you alone have compassion on our sins. Praise and honour to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he'd raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, why was the perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and believing in Jesus. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please sit down. St. John, in his Gospel, is at pains to tell us that this anointing at Bethany that we just heard in the Gospel is six days before the Passover. Six days before the Passover. Unlike the other Gospels, John has Jesus on the cross when the lambs are being slaughtered for Passover. The other Gospels had the Passover the day before, Maundy Thursday. For John, Jesus clearly is the Paschal Lamb, the ultimate sacrifice, lifted high upon the cross. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified, we will hear a few verses on from today's passage. Jesus knows his vocation. Jesus knows his calling, where he will be lifted up from the earth and draw all people to himself. But before this, he comes to his friends, to Mary, Martha, and Lazarus for a last meal with them before he enters Jerusalem where all these things will happen. It is an intimate family gathering. Jesus is with people who know him well 
and who love him. And he's with people he loves and he knows he can trust. And Mary does this extraordinary, intimate, sensual, shocking thing of pouring out the most expensive perfume over the feet of Jesus and wiping his feet with her hair. The action of this woman, Mary, is in such contrast to what we will see of the disciples as the week goes on. The disciples won't get what is going on. The disciples won't understand. They won't compute until after the resurrection. Apart from John, of course, the beloved disciple, but he would say that of himself, wouldn't he? This woman, Mary, does what prophets and priests do in the Old Testament. She anoints a king. She recognizes Jesus as the Messiah, and she lavishes what she has upon him. And like a monarch who is consecrated for their kingly duty, the servant king is consecrated for his work, the triumph of the cross where he will be lifted up from the earth and draw all people to himself. During Holy Week, we identify with the story of the last days of Jesus' earthly life. We place ourselves at the heart of the action. It is a story at the heart of which we find our own destiny as we enter that cycle of suffering death and resurrection for ourselves with our own lives, our own stories, our own joys, and our own sorrows. We place ourselves like Mary at the feet of Jesus. That wonderful hymn by Charles Wesley, O love divine, how sweet thou art, puts it like this. Forever would I take my seat with Mary at the Master's feet. Be this my happy choice, my only care, delight, and bliss, my joy, my heaven on earth, be this, to hear the bridegroom's voice. As we begin this week, we are being called to break open our hearts as we kneel at Jesus' feet. To kneel at his feet like Mary and to open the treasure of our hearts. We are being called to show our love for him by giving ourselves to him in love and in service to the suffering servant. And as we look beyond this week, to remember that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do for Jesus. So let us pray for the church and for the world and thank God for his goodness. We pray for the universal church as it keeps this holy week. We pray for Christopher, our bishop, Richard, the Bishop of Kingston, for Justin, our Archbishop, for Pope Francis, and Bartholomew, the Ecumenical Patriarch. We also pray for our Mother Church in this diocese for Southwark Cathedral. We pray for our witness, and we pray for the renewal of God's church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our local community. We give thanks for this beautiful day. And we pray for our young people, 
for their safety and for their refreshment in their holiday time. We pray for all suffering as a result of the pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world. We pray for the coming of God's kingdom. We pray for justice, mercy, and peace. We remember especially the people of Myanmar, the Uyghur people, the people of Yemen, and northern Nigeria. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who are in need, whether they suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We pray for an anointing with God's Holy Spirit of all those who are in need at this time. And we pray especially for those who are known to God alone, who have no one else to pray for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our As we celebrate this Mass, we give thanks for our fellowship with all who've gone before us. We pray for the repose of the souls of the recently departed, and among them, Ben Manifold, Sheila Saunders, priest, Raymond Butwell, Daisy Cruikshank, and Tade Barnas, priest. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. So let us join our prayers with those of Our Lady, the Queen of Heaven, as we say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Gracious God, receive these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ Jesus, we have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And Lord, accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and the good of all his church. Jesus, true vine and bread of life, ever giving yourself that the world might live. Let us share your death and passion. Make us perfect in your love. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For as the time of his passion and resurrection draws near, the whole world is called to acknowledge his hidden majesty. The power of the life-giving cross reveals the judgment that has come upon the world and the triumph of Christ crucified. He is the victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever, our advocate in heaven to plead our cause, exalting us there to join with angels and archangels, forever praising you and singing. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on Christopher, our bishop, Justin, our archbishop, Pope Francis, and all your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Mary, the mother of God, John the Divine, James the Apostle, the Archangel Gabriel, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, O Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence in the words our Saviour gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all peoples. Amen. It's been very good to see everyone this evening, and a special welcome again to those who've been watching and worshipping with us online. Mass continues at 7 throughout the week, um, and the Good Friday liturgy is at 2 p.m. And there is the opportunity for confession um, tomorrow and again on Wednesday between 6 p.m. and 7 p.m. here in church. The Lord be with you. Christ crucified, draw you to himself to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope and the assurance of sins forgiven. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you today and always. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>